Howdy, Mark Serbu, gun designer, gun nut. Today I've got something definitely unusual for you. Here we combine something weird and crazy and hopefully never seen before uh, that teaches engineering principles. Bet you'd never see that jumbled all into one video, huh? I don't know if you saw my earlier video called the world's largest 22 pistol where I turned my CNC turning center into a gun, but uh, that was kind of fun. It was just a single shot. So going along with that, I thought, hey, what if I just drilled 12 holes in, the, in some steel and made myself a 12 barreled gun and fired that with the turning center? Wouldn't that be cool? Not long after coming up with this great idea, I uh, had a discussion with my firearms expert guy that I have on retainer. Hi, Dan. I uh, figured out that, uh, well, he had me figure out. <laughs> he let me know that I may be making my lathe not just into a gun, but into a machine gun. And that was going to really complicate things. So while you see me loading live ammo into the barrels, that's just movie magic, folks. I ended up making some modifications, so these are only blank firing devices now. So no guns in this video. Yay, YouTube. Now I should point out that this doesn't just work for any old lathe, it has to have what's called a C-axis, and that's where you can control the rotational position of the spindle. Here I'm setting up the C-axis. I'm making sure the rotation is correct so that the punch I have chucked up there goes in the right place to set off the primers, which is that little pocket off to the side of the main hole that the shell goes in. This makes it a lot easier to see. I've already got the rotation set up, and now I'm working on my initial position for the firing pin. Well, punch, which has become firing pin. Come on, hurry up my kids. I said, hurry up. Luckily, it's a, it's a Friday and everybody else cut out early and there's a huge storm outside. So, kind of a more relaxed mood around here. <laughs> it's always a relaxed mood. Hey, food. Oh, you run into something. Okay, here we go. Again. Just a practice run here, making sure I got the program right. So far, everything is looking good. It's doing what it's supposed to be doing. By the way, this punch is moving at rapid speed, not feed speed. Pay attention, that's a hint. And here's a practice run with a cap on, but no blanks. All right, that's it. And now we have blanks loaded in. Okay, I got one to go off, but one out of 12? Come on, what the heck's the deal here? Well, remember when I said it was rapid speed, not feed speed? That's a hint. And I said it was a hint. Yeah, we had a whole bunch of uh, attempts here that were not very successful. I mean, I'd get maybe one or two out of 12 to fire, and that just sucks. Okay, so it went on like this for a while. And by the way, it's not just on rapid, it's on 100% rapid, because I figure, well, you know, firing pins are supposed to go fast. That's how you set off primers. But then I remembered something from engineering college, probably third or fourth year. And I said to myself, hmm, maybe if I was going 25% rapid instead of 100% rapid, I'd get better results. All right, what smarty pants engineer type knows why that is? Let me know in the comments before I give away the answer. 
Final hint, it has to do with three letters that don't mean pelvic inflammatory disease. Yes, it's the PID that most people on the planet get to be blissfully unaware of. The PID, Proportional Integral Derivative Controller, from control theory. So why does it apply here? Because all the programmed motions in a CNC machine are governed by PID control theory. Basically, you're controlling the movement of your table, or in this case, the tool turret, and the cutter has a very precise path. I mean, you've programmed to do a very precise path, and it's not allowed to overshoot. So if you're hauling ass in a cut, and you're going along 100 inches a minute to 1,000 inches a minute, and all of a sudden you got to make a right-hand turn, well, that thing has to slow down first. It can't just, the, you know, the momentum of all that stuff won't allow it to just stop on a dime and then go another direction. It has to slow down before it makes the turn. So that's what dawned on me here. I'm going from the fastest speed this thing can go, and I'm slowing down on a dime the last 25 thousandths when I'm you know, acting like a firing pin here. And to slow down from the faster speed, you actually end up going slower at the end than you would be if you started from a slower speed. So guess what? 25% rapid gave it a lot more reliability, as you can see here. So for those of you who never had to know about control theory, and hopefully you can soon forget about me bringing it up here, consider yourselves lucky. And for those poor, poor engineering students struggling along in college wondering what the hell this crap is for, hey, someday you might actually use it. All right, so did you like this control theory stuff? Did you like seeing this weird thing that I made? Now, who's a get her done type who knows a really simple bypass for all this crap? Forget all the control theory, forget everything. Who knows of a kind of punch that just would have worked 100% right from the get-go? Let me know that in the comments. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you as always. Catch you next time. Got a lot of cool stuff in the works. Got a Diabolos video I put out there six days ago and they demonetized it. And I'm still waiting for my appeal, but... Uh. All right, see ya.